Square accepts Bitcoin, Forbes finds Finney, Charlie Shrim seeks a plea deal, and mining goes solar. Hello, I'm Jared Kinnan, and here's what's happening today in money and tech. Popular mobile payment provider Square has announced that they have started accepting Bitcoin through Coinbase for merchants on their Square Market online storefront. Buyers will see a unique Bitcoin address generated for each sale that they can pay for via any hosted or mobile wallet using that QR code. The sellers will then be credited for the sale back in U.S. dollars, with no fees making their experience seamless with what they are already used to. In related news, Bitcoin users were greeted this morning with phishing emails and withdrawal requests in what appeared at first to be a bad April Fool's joke. Rumors then began to surface that Coinbase had been hacked and their user list leaked. Coinbase responded by saying, Despite speculation on a few forums, there has been no data breach of names or emails at Coinbase. The Bitcoin community's response had been mixed, but with few users supporting Coinbase's email-to-user enumeration. Coinbase's blog now states, For individuals who list a name, our product and privacy policy make it explicitly clear that this contact information can be displayed, and in turn makes Coinbase a more human user experience. After the Newsweek quest for Satoshi Nakamoto concluded with what some would call inadequate results, Forbes writer Andy Greenberg set out to find his own answers. This time, the search led to Hal Finney, the cryptographer who worked with Satoshi Nakamoto in the early Bitcoin days. By contrast, many in the community already know who Finney is and what he contributed to the protocol. So when they also heard that he is suffering from ALS, they rose up once again to raise money for him in a campaign led by Greenberg. Well, former BitInstant CEO Charlie Shrem remains under house arrest for charges of money laundering and involvement in the Silk Road, the U.S. Assistant Attorney Saren Turner has filed for a second postponement of his trial until the 28th of April in order to allow time for plea deal discussions. In the meantime, Shrem has attempted to stay active in the Bitcoin community despite his house arrest. Skyping in to speak at the Texas Bitcoin Conference last month and planning to join the post-film talk for Bitcoin documentary The Rise and Rise of Bitcoin at the Tribeca Film Festival later this month. Solar Miner has released their latest product, the Solar Miner USB, a solar-powered hardware platform designed to be an all-in-one solar-powered mining machine for Bitcoin and Litecoin without the high energy costs of ASIC miners. According to co-founder John Carter, this revolutionary technology will help reduce world poverty by allowing people in rural settings to start earning regular income. And the Council for UK City Kingston upon Hull has launched their own separate digital currency, dubbed Hullcoin, which is the first ever cryptocurrency issued by a legal body to tackle financial issues within the community such as poverty. New Bitcoin ATM company Genesis Coin has received 12 more orders for machines in Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania, Canada, and even farther in Australia, Brazil, Hong Kong, and South Korea. These machines have been seeing high demand due to their ability to process more than just Bitcoin transactions, but Dogecoin and Litecoin as well. And competitor ATM company Lamassu has launched New Zealand's first two Bitcoin ATMs in Auckland. Watch our interview with both Lamassu CEO Zach Harvey and Genesis Coin CEO Evan Rose from Coin Summit, available on our site. We continue our coverage of Coin Summit today with more interviews, including Patrick Merck, Jonathan Levin of Coinmetrics, and Brock Pierce. Find more of these videos along with information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. I'm Jared Kennan, and this has been Money and Tech's Daily News Update.